I Got Seven's occasional listeners and newbies were introduced to the Flight Log era on March 8th, 2016. It is the first time that JYP Entertainment crafted a saga for Got Seven, and certainly the first time that I Got Seven were taken down the infamous fan theory path. We will explore several concepts throughout this experience. The first, an accident did happen. The order of events is turbulence, departure, and then arrival. Jin Young was in purgatory, and we've witnessed his survivor's guilt. Got Seven Jin Young is dead. Well, was dead for a little over a year. From the departure trailer, we weren't too certain, but yeah, J.Y. Park killed his namesake off at the get-go. He came for JB later, but we'll get to that. In departure, we saw that Jin Young distanced himself from his six brothers, departing from the environment emotionally so that he could observe them instead. He initially created the distance at the 13 second mark, looking at Jackson as if he lost his mind for invading his space. It's at that 16 second mark where we catch Jin Young looking at the camera, its holder, and the actions within the car with the reserved glare. Not necessarily judging, but not willing to contribute. For those viewing who are introverts, there is a familiarity with this facial expression. Jin Young widens his eyes thereafter to non-verbally acknowledge that he A. sees his brother and B. would rather be left the hell alone. And alone he would be in purgatory. Purgatory, for all intents and purposes of explaining something on a non-religious level, is a metaphysical space for those who aren't necessarily even considered evil, but not quite considered good either. It's like the sorting hat isn't finished with you just yet, and clear, honest thinking needs to be had. So how'd Jin Young get himself placed into purgatory? Oh, the first 45 seconds of the turbulence trailer? We watch him function separate of the rest of the group, this time with headphones on to block out their noise. And when the real opportunity to alert them of upcoming problems presented itself, he said nothing. You can see him wrestle with it a bit from the 42nd to 46 second mark, but still, he said nothing. He said nada. And that choice is what placed him in the further and journeyed down memory lane for three freaking trailers. And you know what? Although there is the possibility of exceptions, science rules that people in a coma show zero signs of a normal sleep wakefulness cycle, so they are incapable of dreaming. You can scratch that one completely out. In short, this is the cycle of the things we've experienced. His brain is going through all of the things that he has to sort out and make a decision about. Is it really important for him to be amongst his brothers? Does he really want to fly and be free emotionally like they are? And that's what we've been watching, only for him to come out of it at the end of this particular video. We'll get into the next theory tomorrow.